so number two is uh, uh, during the construction phase of the project, uh, utilizing AIA contract documents, an architect ordinarily, and then we have a bunch of choices. Um, okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, a reviews and approves pay requests. That sounds sort of reasonable. Uh, B approves the construction means, methods, and procedures. Approves the construction means, methods, and procedures. That sounds sort of, uh, I don't know, it doesn't seem quite right. Uh, C periodically inspects and supervises the construction. Well, you certainly periodically inspect things, so maybe that's possible. And then D coordinates the subcontractors. That one sounds odd too. So, okay, what's going on here? What are we really talking about? Uh, so, just right off the bat, I'm just going to tell you the answer to this one is A, because it's the most reasonable answer out of, uh, out of all of them. Um, so, A is the answer, but let's look at B, because B is really the, the key to this. Uh, means and methods is referring to the idea of the actual uh, putting together the process, putting together the, uh, the actual uh, building of something, going, going forward and actually making the thing. That's all the GC. The GC work is to build it, to, to make it become alive, to, to actually uh, become a thing. The architect's job is to come up with the design intent. So you produce all kinds of work, schematic drawings, all the way through uh, bid documents and everything, and those are all about creating a design intent. Now you'll hear a few different ways of describing it. I think design intent is sort of the easiest because it's the clearest uh, difference from means and methods. So architect is all about design intent and also being an agent for the owner, meaning that you actually answer uh, in place of the owner in many situations. Uh, so you can speak for the owner in many situations, not all situations, but in many situations. You have agency for the owner. So those are the two things that are the two main things that the architect is doing, design intent and agency for the owner, helping the owner. Uh, the GC is all about uh, the means and methods, the making of the thing, the scheduling of the making of the thing, the, all of that whole process part that ends up with a final finished product. Uh, so when you look at B, that's all about means and methods. That is totally not something that the architect should be doing. Uh, and in fact, if you do claim to be doing anything about the means and methods, you suddenly are taking on the liability from the contractor. Even if you're talking about the means and methods of something that isn't the thing that goes wrong, uh, once you've done it, you have claimed it on the project uh, in, in perpetuity until the end of that project. Uh, so uh, as soon as it gets to the insurance companies, they're going to scan and look for uh, any memo or anything like that where it says that, yes, I'm there to approve the means and methods. And if you have signed that or said that uh, somewhere in the, in the written records, that means you're taking all that liability. So it's a really key thing to realize. It's a big difference in the classic scenario for architects. Um, and the classic scenario is design, bid, build. That's sort of the, if it doesn't say design, build, or fast track, or something, that's the way that you should imagine that the question is, uh, that's where the question is aiming. So design, bid, build is a typical situation. There's an owner. The owner hires an architect. The architect goes through a series of, of, uh, of drawings and, and design uh, processes. Uh, and ends up with uh, a bid package. Uh, the owner and the architect get together, they come up with a list of bidders, they send out the bid package to the list of bidders, and uh, the bidders then review and uh, put a bunch of bids together. Uh, the owner eventually selects one of the, one of the bidders, uh, presumably a low bid, but not necessarily, uh, and that low bidder or that bidder that's been selected now becomes the GC. Um, that's called design, bid, build. You've designed it, then you bid it out, and then somebody's going to build it, right? So the classic scenario of these things uh, in that setup, the architect, design intent, the uh, builder is uh, means and methods. So we look at C and D. Let's look at C, periodically inspects and supervises the construction. Well, that one sounds so close uh, that, you know, you certainly do periodically inspect. That's definitely part of your, your process. Uh, but the word supervise is in there, and that is a key one. You absolutely are not supervising the GC. Uh, if you were supervising the GC, that means you're supervising the means and methods, which means you're taking all the liability. And, uh, that's not your job. That's their job. And then coordinate the subcontractors. Clearly, that's actually about um, uh, 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 the contractor's uh, project.
So the answer on this one, it's the sort of simplest one, reviews and approves pay requests. You don't necessarily do that on every single project, but on most projects, that's one of your roles. You're there to help the owner understand, you're as the agent of the owner, to understand is what the contractor is saying a reasonable thing? Uh, because the presumption is that they are not as sophisticated about this process as you would be. Uh, so that you can look at the, the request for money from the contractor and if they're saying, yes, uh, uh, we're 100% done with uh, uh, plumbing and you're looking around and seeing that you know none of the toilets are installed or none of the sinks work, well then they're not 100% done with the plumbing and you get to say no, right? That's one of the, the roles that you have to play during construction administration. The best answer here is going to be A, reviews and approves pay requests. All of the other ones are essentially a version of being part of means and methods, and means and methods is all the contractor. Well, thank you, Mike, uh, and thanks to all of you who have tuned in. And if you'd like to attend our next ARE live broadcast, visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. Uh, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your answers with Mike for live feedback during the broadcast, just like today. Um, and to learn more about our AIA ARE prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com. Uh, we'll uh, include, a note, uh, include a link in the show notes. Uh, and for those of you who are ready and, and want to go ahead and get busy preparing for the ARE, uh, you can use a coupon, uh, a 15% coupon off the first charge on any AIA ARE prep membership with code 527-115-WEBINAR. That's 527-15-WEBINAR. Uh, and that'll expire on June 15th. Um, and of course, if you're already an AIA member, you can visit AIA.org slash ARE prep to get a 30% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership, not just the first charge. Um, and that also uh, expires on June 15th. Um, and finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think um, and share any suggestions um, that you may have. I promise uh, we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. Uh, so thanks for watching. <laughs>